Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State Attack, and today I'm going to talk about the top five things that I do or use on my Apple Watch, my uh, LTE 4 version, Series 4, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I get asked the question a lot because I did go and get the new version when it came out. Like, what are the differences? What's the difference? And it's really kind of hard to quantify that at first because the only obvious ones are the new features that are specific only to the watch. So that was really my answer for the longest while. Um, but I have some more concrete responses to that question that I get asked as to whether or not it's worth going and upgrading to the watch for. Um, of course, some of these things are native to just the most recent version of the software. So if your Apple Watch is able to get the uh, version of the software that's currently out now, um, some of these features are going to be available, but I've also got some specific ones to the Apple Watch 4 in there uh, that, um, that aren't available on others. So the first is actually LTE specific, which is the ability to be able to ditch my iPhone and not miss out on phone calls, notifications, text messages, and stuff like that. Um, I like to go to the gym, and I don't want to necessarily have my phone in my pocket or on the treadmill or anywhere where it could potentially get stolen or left on accident or whatever. I see phones getting left behind all the time at the gym. Of course, people usually remember them and go get them, but I would much rather just put my phone somewhere and not have to deal with it or worry about it. And with the Apple Watch, of course, you can do that. Uh, and, and with Number Sync, uh, through most of the carriers that are out there, if I, if I get a call or a text message or something on my phone, it's going to get pushed over to my watch and I don't have to worry about missing that. And there's something liberating about actually just leaving your phone behind. Most people might get anxiety over it, and I know that I did at first, but once I got used to being able to uh, get my call still and reply to text messages and see notifications and stuff on my watch, it made it nice just to not have that uh, in in my hands anymore, just to be able to put the phone down, put it away, even if I'm at home. Just having the phone on me means that I'm always constantly wanting to look at the screen. But when I have my watch on me, I can't go and see who commented on something on Instagram or check Facebook or whatever. Uh, I'm limited to what is available on the watch, which still is a lot. And I even have some of those notifications turned off so that I could just be more present with the people that are around me but uh, what's great is I won't miss out on those phone calls or text messages that could have been important we all hold on to our phone because we don't want to miss out on something important but the phone also provides a lot of additional stuff that keeps us distracted and so having the LTE yes it's a, an additional $10 fee with AT&T for me to have uh, the LTE on the watch but it's well worth the $10 because I, keep, I get to put the phone aside and not worry uh, about it as much, which makes me more present to those that are in my family and people that are important to me. Um, number two is the fitness tracking, which of course all the Apple Watches do, but the Apple Watch 4 has some additional fitness tracking things that are pretty cool. Um, I utilize my Apple Watch. I wear it pretty much 24-7. Of course, I do take it off to charge it for a little bit, um, but I use it for sleep tracking. I use it for the ECG, I use it for workout tracking, and I'll talk a little bit more about the ECG here for a split second because a lot of people are saying like, what's the point of the ECG if I'm perfectly healthy, it's not, informa it's not information that I need. Um, but I'm, I'm a big proponent on knowing the baseline of all of your stuff. So I go you know, to the doctors once a year and get my labs done so that I know what those numbers are. Um, I like to know what my blood pressure is, what my heart rate uh, typically is, like resting heart rate and stuff like that. I, even though this is just a single lead ECG and it's not as in depth or involved as a full like 12 lead EKG where there's leads all over you, which I actually had one of these recently because I needed one. Um, and I'll talk about that in another video. So uh, I do have a video that quantifies the purpose for having the ECG. And it's a little bit different than what people are talking about out there right now 
Because most people are saying, especially doctors are saying, oh, well, if something shows up that looks weird on the ECG, like we're getting calls from patients and they're worrying and it's causing them stress and maybe nothing was wrong in the first place. But there's that chance that maybe something was wrong. And even though the Apple Watch really isn't designed to do anything other than tell you whether or not you are um, in uh, in AFib, um, if you know what your baseline is and what your baseline ECG looks looks like when you're not feeling right, when something's not right, you can run it again and see if it looks different. And I'll talk about that in a whole nother video. So make sure to click the subscribe button here on, uh, on our channel and click that bell to be notified when that video goes live. Um, so the fitness tracking is great. Yes, I do. And if you noticed, have a Fitbit flex on also. I like that the Fitbit is universal, cross-platform, uh, so f as far as step counts go and stuff like that, when I'm tracking uh, the food that I eat and whatnot, I do that in the Fitbit app because I do occasionally switch between iPhone and Android periodically. I've been known to do that ever since Android first came out uh, and the iPhone. I've just been switching back and forth. And so I want there to be a, a place of consistency for my data. And uh, since I switch between iPhone and Android and there's no good way to sync your data across both those platforms, I also use uh, the Fitbit. Um, I also use my Apple Watch to uh, take quick notes and reminders down. Now, it's really hard to write them out even though you can do the scribble thing. And Siri is getting better at converting our, our voice into text, but it's still not perfect. So I often take a lot of audio messages or audio notes um, in the Apple Watch. And it's very easy just uh, to take audio notes. I mean, there's, there's apps and stuff that are available. I'll link to some of those down below. Um, but it's very easy to take an audio note and then, of course, go back later. Uh, it's uh, using Siri reminders and some of the different Siri things like remind me to do this or whatever later. Often it repeats it back to you and it's incorrect and you have to do it three or four times. And by the time that you finally get it right, you could have just written it down or maybe even done the task by now. So most of the time I don't utilize that um, that feature. I utilize the voice memo and then I'll go back and listen to my voice memos later and convert them into some sort of a note. Um, in my Evernote uh, top five Evernote productivity tips video, I talk about how I use that audio, uh, that, that spoken word so that I can better understand what it is that I'm trying to say, uh, what I meant, maybe even how I felt about it. I mean, you can tell a lot more by audio than by going back and reading some little note that you wrote. How many times have you gone back and, and looked at a note that you wrote and thought, I feel like I'm missing something. Like maybe I thought I'd remember a part of that and the note would trigger it, but it didn't end up doing that. An audio note is so much better. There's perfectly good reason why doctors still dictate their notes. Um, number four is an alarm. Of course, all of the Apple Watches have had an alarm on them. But for me, I wake up early in the morning to get started on my day. I don't want to disrupt my wife or we also have a baby sleeping in the room right now. And uh, I don't want to disrupt them. So having the alarm vibrate on here. And I also use the alarm for other things as well, uh, such as reminding me uh, to do certain things that I do every single day. At a specific time, um, I will have it remind me to do those things. So the alarms, great use for that. Um, and, and you can set, I think, as many alarms as you want uh, and customize those in the watch. And so I use the watch a lot for alarms. Um, now, another thing here, number five, is music podcasts going direct to AirPods. So if you have AirPods, uh, these are a beautiful little device. Uh, the audio quality is fantastic on them. They connect to any of your Apple devices without having to individually pair them to all of them and then remember to unpair so that it pairs to one of the other ones. It's super simple to use AirPods with an Apple Watch and paired with the LTE. That's why LTE is in the title of this video because uh, unless you sync, download and sync stuff to your watch, which it has a limited amount of storage space, um, you will need LTE to stream. So for example, I use Spotify uh, for my music quite often. And so Spotify, all my playlists and everything right on my wrist, 
put, put the AirPods in. When I'm at the gym, I don't have to worry about a phone banging around or anything. I've got everything right on my wrist, right there, available for me. Uh, I can sync an audiobook over from Audible. And also, if you are interested in audiobooks, I have a link down below. You'll get a free audiobook and a free month of Audible Premium if you use it. Uh, it's a special offer that they gave to me because I read so or I listen to so many audiobooks. Um, they 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 gave me that to give away to everybody. Uh, so free audiobook, free month of Audible Premium. They're not sponsoring this video. It's just something I'm throwing out there because it's free for all of you. Um, so with that said, uh, podcasts as well. Podcasts are getting huge. More and more people are listening to them. Uh, some of your favorite people are probably on podcasts or may even have their own podcast. So being able to uh, load and play your podcast right from your wrist is absolutely fantastic, whether you use the Apple Podcast app or some alternative podcast app. Uh, a lot of them now are standalone Apple Watch apps, which means your phone doesn't have to be there for a proxy uh, to, to you know pass the file from your phone to your watch and then to your AirPods or, or whatnot. So perfect good use cases for the Apple Watch. Yes, the majority of these things you can do on other versions of an Apple Watch, a non-LTE version or whatnot. Um, uh, there are some things that I definitely do think make this watch useful. Um, I absolutely love the infograph uh, watch face. I think that's a fantastic thing uh, that is super useful for me. I have a, a video on Apple Watch tips, and I'll get more into that in the Apple Watch tips. So you want to make sure to subscribe for a couple of Apple Watch related videos, which is uh, my top five Apple Watch four tips. And then also that video where I talk about how I was able to use the ECG feature in the watch to determine something that was going on with me. And of course, I'm here to talk about it. So all is well. So make sure to subscribe to the channel here. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you back here in the next one. Take care.